testing. One, two, three. We gather as we live in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My friends, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins, asking God for mercy and strength. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to gather the nations into God's
peace. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. And let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and into the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. How I love your law, O Lord. It is my meditation all the day. Lord, I love your commands. Your command has made me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. Lord, I love your commands. I have more understanding than all my teachers when your decrees are my meditation. Lord, I love your commands. I have more discernment than the elders because I observe your precepts. Lord, I love your commands. From every ill I withhold my feet that I may keep your words. Lord, I love your commands. From your ordinances, I turn not away, for you have instructed me. Lord, I love your commands. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found a passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. 
and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked upon intently at him. He said to him, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Is this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do you hear in your native place the things that you heard were done in Capernaum? And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I, t I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zephrath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the times of Elisha, the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman, the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Who is this guy? Isn't he so-and-so's kid? What gives him the right to come in our town and lecture us like that? Take a hike before we get violent. All seems to be going well with his relatives and friends and neighbors when Jesus talked about a jubilee year, a time of forgiveness and freedom, a time of sharing and rejuvenation in Israel. So they were downtrodden, they felt uplifted in hearing the promise of good time to come. But as Jesus continues to teach, the people became angry, filled with fear because his message of good news, the promise he brings from God is not just for Israel, but for everyone, Jews and non-Jews alike. It's a challenge to his listeners to look beyond their preconceived ideas of salvation and charity and to see the world and people around them with the eyes and heart of God rather than our own human wisdom. Even in our own times today, we are bombarded with cautions to take care of ourselves first, me first, to ignore the other, to exclude rather than welcome, and to push away rather than draw in and embrace. The gospel today was challenging for the people in the times of Jesus and can also be challenging for us as well. Calling us, particularly during this time when we are experiencing so much division and social anxiety in our own country, to see ourselves as part of a bigger community that is more than our immediate family, our tribe, or our clan. In essence, Jesus invites us all to be part of the good news he brings. For all of us to go beyond our small circle and be missionaries. Bring God's love and mercy universally to all those around us. Be missionaries for others. So as we gather around the table, the table of the Eucharist, that God invites all of us, may we receive the gift of simple sight, a sight not clouded by biases and prejudices, but pure in seeing that we all are made in God's image. 
and God loves us all. Let's now stand to offer God our prayers and our needs. We pray for the church, for Pope Francis and all leaders, that, they may, that we may be instruments of God's good news in proclaiming liberty to captives, light to the blind, and the oppressed go free. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our civil leaders and for our country, that they may work towards the common good for building peace and justice in our world. We pray to the Lord. For an end to the pandemic, for a cure for the coronavirus, and for all those who are affected by it, we pray to the Lord. And for all of us, that we may have a heart that is pure like God, that we may open and embrace all people with no prejudice. We pray to the Lord. And for the special intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts and for the intentions of those at home. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, we come humbly upon you this day, trusting and knowing that you are always with us. You hear our prayers. We ask you to grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit to the earth and work in human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and working human hands, and become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered, willingly to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, now who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.